Hello, my soccer universe. Well, after all, I can wear my Milan jersey uh, for a roundup video. I'm quite happy about it. The jinx for Inter was not working, but I didn't jinx Milan. Remember, if you want to jinx a team that you generally do not like, although I say it again, my dislike and hate for other teams since I'm trying to make these videos completely dissipated in a way because you watch them and you also see things that you like and dislike it's really interesting when you start watching the other side as well how things develop yep um, but before we get into the uh, leagues and the results there a uh, quick thing um, I completely enjoyed the reaction to my Euro 2020 draw uh, reaction and prediction uh, so many comments that's what this channel should be about I know still small will grow will grow and I will have this on many videos but for now I really can actually participate and give my opinion and uh, if you have commented or you wanna comment and uh, if you're watching thanks a lot I am really appreciative of that uh, part of this is me sharing my experiences uh, how I experience soccer and if it comes back even worth more. And the last thing before uh, we go into the uh, happenings in the leagues is of course the Ballon d'Or. I don't want to make a separate video on it because it's just <clears throat> Messi won it for the sixth time. Now he's overtaking Ronaldo again. Uh, I think it is completely deserved. I, I don't want to say I don't care about it but I don't pay too much attention attention to all these things. Simple fact, an individual award in a team sport is a little bit weird and that there's always the focus on the offensive players is also a bit weird. I think Virgil van Dijk would have uh, deserved it too. Um, so there you go. Um, at least it's a little bit better than the FIFA award which gets voted on by all members and so on and you get all kind of even weirder results. But having said that, I think Messi was and still is the best player in the world. So yeah, uh, it's actually Travis that he only won it six times, <laughs> either way. But enough of that, let's stay uh, in the Messi universe, meaning we start at La Liga, where the results are Celta Vigo, Toled from Friday, nil nil. Alaves, Real Madrid, uh, one, two, uh, saw the highlights where both go goals were scored by defenders. For Real Madrid, uh, Sergio Ramos and Cavajal. Um, I have to say that uh, Sergio Ramos uh, goal was a nice free kick by um, Cruz, and he just needed to uh, head head it in. The goal for Alaves came from a penalty that uh, again Ramos <laughs> initiated <laughs> for lack of better words. Um, Real says that Abar saw the second half of that one not very much concentrated because Saturday I actually started watching uh, quite a few things in the Bundesliga and the Premier League so this was just the side game. Uh, it was 1-1 at the half but we are Sabal, William, this, uh, Jose and Odegaard make it 4-1. I have to say uh, Sociedad is... now I saw it. They are really joyful to watch and the Odegaard goal was nice. Ramayorka Betis uh, won 2, Valencia 2 1 over Villarreal. Um, I was editing videos and having it on. Have to say, it was an okay game. Um, Rodrigo Moreno gives, he can hit the goal. Um, a 1 0 oh, uh, a lead, and Guisa equalizes, but then late Torres makes it 2 1. I actually felt that Valencia could have scored more in that. Uh, then Early Sevilla beats Leganes 1-0. Sevilla makes a case for being the third best team in the league. Uh, but you know, over all only a 1-0 over Leganes, but then they also play Europa League. And this will be a theme that especially Europa League teams uh, had kind of a rough weekend. Athletic Club Granada 2-0, Espanyol 2-4. Osasuna actually saw it was um I think 1-0 for um at the half for Espanyol, and then it so quickly fell apart. In the 46th, Osasuna equalizes, in the 49th is 2-1, and in the 84th, then uh, it was 3-1. So, uh, Espanyol really not looking good after having actually a pretty good campaign last year. 
get tough a bit Levante 4-0 and then the big one Atletico Madrid Barcelona I should have maybe watched it more attentively than I did it was an awesome game uh, dominated by two players uh, Ter Stegen and Goal who made two miracle saves I mean I think the one with the leg was lucky but there was one with the hand just outstanding Atletico really started super strong um, probably would have deserved a goal uh, early on uh, hit the post uh, it was just a uh, real dominance but then uh, Barcelona clawed itself back Griezmann getting booed at every touch I'm a little bit getting tired of all this we are living in a society where everyone gets upset over everything and yes it was clear that Griezmann uh, cannot stay all the time at Atletico uh, Cherish that what he did for Atletico he was a player that was outstanding for Atletico for I think five years or so um, booing him, yes, the matter in which he left was maybe not the prettiest one, blah, 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 but yeah, I hope, okay, for one game you can boo him, then let him be, he was too good of a player for you, uh, and to you Atletico fans out there, if you have a Griezmann jersey that you want to get rid of, uh, don't burn it over there, just send it to me, literally, anyway, Barcelona then, can get a little bit more order in the game and it is a lot more even and I think uh, in the second half I have to say that there was not too much coming from Atletico uh, Barcelona actually had the game in hand or controlled it a little bit better I found it interesting although not entirely unexpected Barcelona played in their um, new Catalan uh, fourth jersey and they were all uh, in the you know all the track suits and even the clothes they were traveling were all with the Catalan flag somewhere in there. I guess when you go to Madrid you have to show, yeah, we are not Spain. Go figure. But yeah, it was Messi. How fitting. Uh, who just takes the ball. Um, his dribble kind of gives second thoughts into uh, uh, Thomas. And uh, he just bounces it off to Suarez, kind of, but give it back immediately, and then he takes the shot. It's a typically messy goal, um, where he just uses um, a Suarez as a little dummy, makes a brilliant shot in the 85th, it's one of Barcelona. And they get a big win, because I think many expected that after this round, Real Madrid is on the top. No, it's Barcelona, a level on points with Real Madrid. We still have the Classic to be played. Sevilla is in third, Rasostad in fourth, Atletico in fifth, and Atletico Madrid cannot get anything going. Is in sixth place. Then we have Getafe, Valencia, Osasuna, Granada. Uh, it is actually then, yeah relatively tight for those Europa League spots. Uh, I think Levante, Real, Betis, Villarreal, Alaves, Real Valladolid, 18, they're all still in there. I think uh, relegation zone really starts in Eibar, Mallorca, Vigo, Spaniel and Leganes. Premier League, oh, this is my weak spot now. I recorded the highlights and never got to watch them. Uh, but I saw the last 20 minutes, minutes of Newcastle against City. Um, it was 1-1 and then I said, yeah, I gotta watch this. Um, and see what is happening. I brilliant goal by De Bruyne. That was my goal of the weekend. I absolutely brilliant goal by De Bruyne. Gives City the lead, seemingly um, handing them the win. But no, uh, from a free kick, uh, another dist long distance shot gives Newcastle the 2 2. Surprise result West Ham beats Chelsea 1 0. I saw a lot of Liverpool against Brighton, um, where Van Dijk with two headers makes it 2 0. Uh, I think Firmino hits the post or something like that. Uh, Liverpool really dominated, but uh, almost shot themselves in the foot when Alisson, uh, there's a ball coming, and he's, uh, he, he's out of the box and touches with the hand. I think this is just a reflex there. Uh, get sent off. Adrian comes on, and then the freak, uh, the the wall is positioned, but Adrian is still in the corner, and I think the referee really just doesn't, doesn't see it because you know he's small, the wall is high. Freak kick goes into the uh, net uncontested, and you know uh, kudos to Brighton. Liverpool though hangs on for the win, and yeah, um, they are just good. They are just really, really good, and they get their uh, their wins in. Gotta say it that way. Spurs, Bournemouth. I uh, saw a little bit of that. No high highlights, but I saw the 
I think the third goal by Sissoko, which was really nice. Dele Ali makes the um, other two again. It's very similar to what they did in the first game. They had a 3 0 lead and then let it go. Uh, Harry Wilson actually gets a nice goal for 3 1. And then uh, he also makes one of the stoppage time and ends 3 2. Um, I'm not sure how Mourinho is happy with that. Crystal Palace beats Burnley 2 1. Southampton gets a win over lot for 2 1. And then many Sunday games we had um, Wolves 1 1 against Sheffield, Norwich against Arsenal 2 2. Arsenal having, of course, a new coach with Freddie Lungberg and still cannot get anything going. Leicester City Everton 2 1. Leicester stays up there. That's the, almost the lone. Uh, chaser of Liverpool and United Aston Villa 2-2 so in the table Liverpool 8 point lead over Leicester um, many will say it's more important to have 11 point over City Chelsea mm, yeah didn't help uh, but you know they had a tough game during the week um, they're now in fourth Spurs is up in fifth already you can see how tight it is then Wolves and Sheffield and Arsenal and United slowly dropping again uh, Burnley 18 Crystal Palace 18 Bournemouth 16 West Ham 16 Newcastle 16 yeah we're getting in relegation zone Aston Villa Brighton 15 Everton 14 oh yeah, yeah Everton is really down Southampton also has a hard time and Norwich City uh, stays ahead of Watford on the bottom of the table so a bit more of Bundesliga where Schalke gets uh, yeah, kind of lucky win over Un Union. Deserve it, but it was uh, lucky. Uh, Hertha BC Dortmund, the debut of Klinsmann. Uh, Dortmund had a 2-0 lead rather quickly. Uh, but then Hertha gets a goal back and Dortmund played for a long time with only 10 men. But in the end Dortmund hangs on. Is it writing the ship? I'm not sure. Leipzig had a very quick 3-0 lead over Paderborn. I think it was not even 20 minutes playing. They were 3-0 up. That it was then 2-3 was a little bit of a fluke, I have to say. Leipzig completely uh, obliterating the opponents. Maybe the Champions League game where they had to really fight hard played into their Hoffenheim Düsseldorf 1-1, Köln Augsburg 1-1, and Bayern against Leverkusen. I did not anticipate watching, but I ended up watching it because it was an absolute nuts game. Um, because the chances that Bayern missed, this does not happen that often. Uh, Gnabry Lewandowski, I mean, uh, if you would know better, you would say the complete ineptitude between those two. And Bailey was their bane. Um, just fast, gets the 1-0. Then when Müller equalizes with, I think, a double deflection uh, in, uh, you think, yeah, Bayern is on the way. And then a minute later, Bailey makes it again 2-1. And then I think if, if, at the end of a Gnabry, runs a on goal and he has Lewandowski to his right and Perisic to his left. He gives it to Perisic and they squandered the chance. I mean, you three clear on goal. This needs to be a goal. And it continues like that in the second half. Um, many, 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 many opportunities. I mean, there was really nothing coming for Leverkusen. Radetzky had good saves, uh, but what Bayern missed hit the post. It was an absolute unbelievable game. I believe it was also what Gladbach did against Freiburg. Uh, I really have to say they played well. Uh, that it was only, I think it was 1 1 at the half. But Gladbach having many chances uh, right after the half to make it 2 1. They get a penalty that they miss even. Uh, they hit the post a second time. Um, they make it 3 1. Then Freiburg gets on back, almost made it 3 3. But uh, Mbolo, uh, who was outstanding, makes it 4-2 and Bremer beats Wolfsburg 3-2 and then in a derby, the Main derby, Mainz beats Frankfurt 2-1, two goals by Austrians, Hinteregger and Onisivo. Mm -hmm. In the table, Gladbach still ahead and they are getting serious up there, 28 points, Leipzig 27, Schalke 25, Bayern 24, Borussia Dortmund 23, Freiburg-Leverkusen stay in there 22 uh, each Hoffenheim 21 so we're getting now midfield um, Wolfsburg 20 Frankfurt yes winning at Arsenal and then you're not doing well in the league at 17 Union 16 Mainz 15 Werder 14 Augsburg 14 Düsseldorf 12 Hertha 11 Köln 8 each let's move to Serie A actually I watched a little bit Brescia Atalanta but I have to say um, 
it was really one-sided. Atalanta got a very deserved 3-0 win, as one would expect. Uh, Torino beats Genoa 1-0, and Fiorentina loses at home to Lecce. Uh, Fiorentina is another one of those frustrating teams. They can play so nice, and then uh, they always hit this rocky pitch. The result of the weekend, of course, was Juventus only getting a 2-2 at Sassuolo. They had a 1-0 lead. Sassuolo, though turns it around and it needs Ronaldo, a penalty from Ronaldo, to make it 2-2. Uh, at the end, the pressure of Juve was intense, but they cannot manage. And that gave Inter the chance to um, climb on top of the table, which they did. Platter uh, Martinez makes in the first half 2-0. It was all going for Inter, but Spal puts one back. And then you could see that Inter is still nervy. They are not quite there yet. Lazio Udine 3 0, Parma Milan 0 1. Late goal by Theo Hernandez. Milan actually dominated that game and should have gotten the goals way, way earlier. Yes, there were one or two chances for Parma, but I think if Milan wins this 3 or 4 0, no one can complain. Milan played. I think for the first time I can say Milan played overall good. It's just in front of goal, they overthink it. It is maddening. That they then got the gold, which was not even nicely played because, um, yeah, it was a defensive blunder that Hernandez then gives the goal. But yeah, maybe this is now the spark for Milan to get something going. Uh, yeah, still far off, as we will see. Napoli, Napoli, 1 0 up at half, and then Bologna turns it around. Bologna playing again in green. Cannot tell you how frustrating it is to watch Nap Napoli. This is a team that should be up there, and they're not. Um, Hellas Verona Roma won three, and then a game that I wish I would have seen all the highlights. Sampdoria had a 3 1 lead over Cagliari, and Cagliari wins 4 3 to stay up there. Uh, Cagliari is amazing this season, they made really smart buys. Um, it was uh, Cagliarella in the 38th 1 0 halftime lead, then Ramirez um, makes it uh, 2 0. Nangolan puts one back, Cagliarella. 3-1 and then Joao Pedro in the 74-76 makes two and then in stoppage time it's 4-3 Jerry. So absolute madness in the table. Now Inter is on top, Juve is only second, then uh, there's a good distance. Lazio having a strong season with 30 and Cagliari 28, Roma 28 as well, Atalanta 25 and then yeah that's where it cuts. Midfield, Napoli 20, Parma 18, Hellas 18, Torino and Milan 17, Bologna 16, Fiorentina 16, uh, Sassuolo and Lecce 14, uh, Udine Tito, Sampdoria 12, Genoa 10, Spal 9, Brescia 7. Um, League A was marked at the big game between Monaco and PSG because of rainfall had to be uh, scrapped. So we have, I really didn't see much. Marseille Brest 2 1, Strasbourg Lyon 1 2, Lille Dijon 1 0, Montpellier 4 2, Nice Angers 3 1, Nîmes Metz 1 1, Reims Bordeaux 1 1, Nantes gets a win again 2 1 against Toulouse, Rennes. 2-1 against Saint Etienne. PSG, of course, still leads, but Marseille hangs in there um, as a challenger. But you know, PSG has a game in hand. Angers also uh, top on the Montpellier, Bordeaux, Nantes, Lyon, Lille, Saint Etienne. It's so crazy. Reims, Rennes, Nice. Then there's a test for the first time. I gave Strasbourg, Monaco can get into this pack there. Amir is down there and in the relegation spots here. Metz, Dijon, Nîmes, Toulouse. Very tight. Uh, the French league, as I said, is uh, the top. There's someone uh, far, far away, but the rest is really uh, close together. Um, very quickly, uh, we said there was the Austrian Bundesliga. Yeah, Austria gets the big win over Hartberg, but I still think it will not be enough. Uh, Sturm wins 5 on over Tirol. Uh, St. Burton, Matsburg, nil nil. Alter, and then all the European teams had real stinkers. Altach uh, loses, uh, wins over Wolfsburg 2-1. Then Admira Salzburg 1-1, where, yeah, uh, Salzburg had uh, big misses there as well. But that opened for the late game on Sunday. It lost the opportunity with a win to get the <laughs> top spot. But in a way, when I heard that, I knew it's not going to happen. The result here is 0-4, but it was everything. But this was the flukiest 4-0 for Rapid ever. It hurts a little bit because it's Rapid. But on the other side, for 60 minutes, you knew that Lask is the better team. The 1-0 for Rapid came after a 
throw in on the side was very quickly played on by Rapid, uh, who made it 1 0. It was not a throw in for Rapid. Then uh, they last hit the post once, and off a goal was, I think, yeah, I'm not sure, rightly or wrongly, uh, ruled out for offside. It seemed to be a very tight decision. Uh, Laskin again twice hits the post uh, or the bar, um, and then from a counter to get the 2 0. Player for uh, Lask is sent off because he cannot keep his mouth shut. Goigingham, my favorite player. Uh, from the resulting free kick, it gets an own goal and then stoppage time for nil. It's one of those games. And yes, we arrived back from Trondheim late Friday evening. So that didn't help either. Although no one mentioned that. Everyone knew that they had a better team. So that was that. In Denmark, we had um, the Copenhagen Derby 2-1 for Copenhagen over Brøndby. So they can have a chance to get up there, but on Monday, Midtjylland uh, won 2-1 over Silkeborg. So uh, Midtjylland is still on top. Um, Copenhagen, India, and then AGF and Brøndby uh, kind of, that rounds out the top four. And in Greece, where is Greece? Here is Greece. We had that OFI beats Ike uh, 1-0, so that was the one uh, top of the table clash, but everything pointed, of course, to Olympiakos over Pauk, which ends in a 1-1 draw from my subscriber Yanis, friend on so on. I, he said it was a very even game and it was a just result. Um, Pauk had the lead, uh, penalty from Valbuena gets the equalizer, so it ends 1-1 and they are both still top of the table, equal in points with 28. It's gonna be um, quite a challenge until the end in Greece. Well, that ends my review. I told you a lot about what I saw, um, where I think things stand. Let me know which games you watched this weekend. Uh, let me know if you agree with my assessment on the games that we saw. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.